<sighs> Big video today, guys. <laughs> Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. I'm gonna skip the intro and all of that nitty gritty because we are going to be ranking all of the eyeshadow palettes that I tried in 2020. And if you're new to my channel, I love eyeshadow palettes. They are my favorite part of makeup. They're what I purchase the most. They're what I review the most. They're what I believe you guys like to watch the most as far as my eyeshadow videos, reviews, explanations, all of that. So that's why there's so many. I'm gonna be ranking 109 eyeshadow palettes that I tried this year. If I'm missing any, don't tell me. You will stress me out. This is it, this is good. 109 is enough. Now, I'm not going to be ranking these in the traditional way that I normally rank these in my videos. Instead of going numerically, I just feel like 100 is too much. It would stress me out too much. And not only that, I feel like there's just too many. It loses the value, it loses the meaning when there's 100 different places. So instead, I'm going to be ranking on a tier system. I created 10 categories from the worst to the best. So I put give or take take 10 eyeshadow palettes in each category. That way I think it makes it not only more meaningful, but a little bit easier to get through as well. So let me talk about the tiers that we have. So this is from worst to best. There are 10 tiers. The worst is no, just no. Then we have one step up, which is not what I was hoping for. Then we have eh. And then we have, I just didn't reach for it. The next category up, kind of boring. The next one, worth a try. Then we have good, but not great. Up higher, the third highest level. Great, but there's better. Even better, but not the best. And then of course, finally, best. Now, I actually won't be talking about my best category, so I guess I'm talking about less than 100 palettes because I already have the best eyeshadow palettes of 2020 in a whole separate video that I've done. So if you want to see the number one top, top, top category, those will be there. But anyways, let's just get into it. Okay, so the first category is going to be now just no. These products didn't work for me. If you love these, good for you. <laughs> these just didn't work for me. I didn't like the quality, color, story, whatever reason. Let's get into it. In each category, they are not in a particular order, so just keep that in mind. But these are kind of the bottom of the barrel palettes for me. So the first one I talked about in my worst makeup, we have the Urban Decay Stoned Vibes palette. Uh, I just, this did not work for me at all. The colors are really inconsistent. I didn't get much pigmentation. The mattes didn't blend. I didn't like it at all. The next one we have Physicians Formula Rose All Play Eyeshadow Palette. I always say I don't like drugstore eyeshadows and I had high expectations for this. Well, maybe not high expectations, but my hopes were high. I was ho definitely hopeful. These looked like Huda Beauty to me. Uh, it's just a powdery, hot mess. The shimmers aren't even detectable on the eyes. Did not like that one. The Shantikai Safari Collection Eye Trio. This has gotten a lot of mentions on my channel lately about how much I don't like it. It's just really overpriced. This fell out in one video. You can see my horrible press job that I did, and I hate pressing eyeshadow palettes. I feel like it's never the same afterwards. But anyways, for me, not worth the money. This was like 70 bucks for some sheer eyeshadows. This is one that I've reviewed recently. We have the ColourPop Hello Kitty and Friends eyeshadow palette. Now this isn't horrible, okay? But at the end of the day, I just, I'm not vibing with the color story. There's nothing special about it. I would only suggest you pick up this eyeshadow palette if you love Hello Kitty like me. So I don't regret it, but I don't recommend it unless you like Hello Kitty. It just, it wasn't that good to me. But I will say, the look I created, I did like, but it wasn't a very good palette. The next one, this you've seen before, it was in my worst makeup of 2020. We have the No Bad Cosmetics Tokyo palette. I wanted to love this. It's adorable, but I just can't get down with No Man's Formula. I have one more palette that I need to try, and that will kind of close the grave if I don't like that one. But I felt like all of the colors, they just disappeared off of my eye completely. The fading was just a little bit too much than I could handle. We have another Nomad Cosmetics eyeshadow palette. This is the Studio 54 quad. Again, like how could I not purchase this? It has these amazing
amazingly gorgeous glitters, but they weren't as pigmented on the eye. I just couldn't get them to pick up like they look in the pan. And just knowing the other quality that we can get from other indie brands, this just wasn't it for me. The Pure and Raw Beauty Christy collab. I did not like really anything <laughs> about this palette personally. The color story I thought was kind of ugly if I'm being honest. You know what? Color story is a personal thing, but the quality also wasn't very good to me. I couldn't blend the shadows. It took forever to create a look even on the neutral side. So I thought not only was the color story kind of not my thing, but the quality was also not very good. These I recently reviewed like two days ago and they've made my way into the no just no category. These are the Dior Trio Bleak eyeshadow palette that's come out for their spring 2021 collection. Check out that review if you want to see me completely trash these because you get zero pigmentation from this bottom color. I mean it's ridiculous. You spend $63 for the color not to show up. And the top two colors they are okay. They're a little bit more on the sheer and subtle side which is fine but I don't I don't get much out of this palette I spent $126 for these little guys and they're worth about five bucks each honestly <laughs> They're only pretty. Then we have the Odin's Eye Free Hud Diva palette. Now, this one's not that bad, honestly. I tried a lot of good eyeshadow palettes and this one is just one that I didn't wanna reach for. This has to do more so with the color story. It is so extremely warm and I feel like the colors don't pull how they look in the pan. So it's even 20 times more warm on the eyelid than they look in the pan because this looks like at least a little bit more of a warm brown. It pulls off almost red on the eye. So the quality in here is not bad, but it's way too warm for me and the colors don't look in the pan how they do on the eyelid. And then the last one, and this was more so a disappointment, not necessarily terrible quality, but this is the ABH Norvina Volume 4 palette. I did not like the quality in here. I just felt like in the first three original palettes, the quality was really good. These colors, I feel like, weren't as pigmented. It was a little bit more difficult to work with. So more so disappointed because I know what ABH can do. So, so that sums up the no, just no category. We are moving up to a little bit better. This is the not what I was hoping for. I can make these palettes work absolutely but my expectations were a little bit higher and I was let down. So we will start off with this Milani palette. I tried this in the beginning of the last year. This is Outlaw Olive. It's really a gorgeous color story, not one that the drugstore comes out with very frequently. And I just don't like the texture of these. I feel like they blend away a little bit too quickly, but you can definitely make this work. It's just, I don't like drugstore palettes and I feel like this is pretty drugstore quality. We have the Vizzy Art from Bois palette. I just feel like this is the least unique palette Vizzy Art could have come out with because a lot of their other palettes also have this color story. The shades are a little bit light. It's just an underwhelming palette. The quality isn't bad, but it's very under the radar. Nothing I really would consider grabbing for too often. I have three palettes here. They're all from the same line. These are the Odin's Eye Alva Mini Ocean Palettes. And while overall, I feel like these individually have some very beautiful shades, they too take a lot to work with if you are creating entire looks with these. So this one is the Mini Forest Palette. This one is the Mini Sky. And this palette in particular, I had the hardest time working with. I felt like these shades were really chunky. And then we have the Mini Ocean, which is probably my favorite of the three, but again, some of the shades are just a little bit more inconsistent than others. This is a, these are palettes that I would grab for to do lid toppers because these middle shades are really stunning, but as a whole, they aren't quite as cohesive as I would like for them to be, and they're a bit inconsistent in the formulas. Next, we have the Pat McGrath Lab Celestial Divinity Luxe Quad in Fleur Fantasia. This came out in her new holiday collection. I just was expecting a little bit more. Now, the look is really, really pretty, don't get me wrong, but I feel like it pulls just so extremely light on the eyelids. It's more of a spring color as opposed to coming out in a winter collection like it did. It's just not my favorite quality from Pat McGrath. It's not what I envisioned when I first saw this online. It does not look 
like on the eyelid like I thought it would look. We also have the Sigma Enchanted palette and the Corderosa palette. I did talk about this briefly in the worst makeup of 2020. I'm just not a fan of Sigma's formula. I find the mattes a little bit more difficult to blend and while I do love the glittery shimmer shades that they have going on, it still takes a little bit of work to make sure that it stays a long time. You need to use a glitter glue and Sigma kills it on the color stories. I will give them that and I'm not going to say I'm never going to buy a Sigma palette again because I really do love their color stories and I can most certainly make the palettes work but I just am not impressed with the quality. We have the e.l.f. Bite Size Eyeshadow Palette in the shade Hot Jalapeno. Now I love other palettes from this line but these matte shades are quite atrocious honestly. It's, it's good for six dollars don't get me wrong so this isn't even an insult to this palette it's just a little bit harder to work with. Um, we have the Ofra Summer Edit Pro Eyeshadow Palette. This is really appealing to me but I never ever ever reach for it. I don't think Ofra has the best eyeshadow formula in the world so this palette is really pretty honestly I I think I'm just gonna end up putting it in my bridal kit because I will get more use out of it because I've set this on my desk and I've never grabbed for it. It's been on my desk for over a month and so the fact that I haven't grabbed for it, it's been one of three that I kept on my desk, says a lot. It's just boring and not the best formula. We have the ColourPop Sailor Moon Pretty Guardian eyeshadow palette. Obviously I bought this more for the novelty of it as opposed to the actual eyeshadows and color story. It's just not my favorite formula from ColourPop if I'm being honest and it's not really a color story that I found myself reaching for. While you can create pretty looks for it, the idea behind it was greater than the performance. We have the Natasha Denona Mini Zendo Palette. I don't know you guys, I just was not feeling this palette. The quality is not bad in here at all. Actually this quality is bad for this shade right here, but I don't really like the color story. I don't feel like the colors are cohesive enough for the type of looks that I like to create. It's just not something I like to grab for and this color I get zero pigmentation from. We have the Wayne Goss, the Luxury Eye Palette in Moonstone. So I love, love, love the look I can create from this, but I can really only create one look because these matte grays I find to be extremely patchy on me and I just think it's unacceptable for the price that you're paying. You can absolutely make this palette work, but it's a luxury eyeshadow palette so I was more so let down with the formula. But this Celestial shade, incredible, but not a fan of those matte grays. The last category in my not what I was hoping for category is the Pat McGrath Labs Mothership Sublime Golden Opulence. So this came out for the Chinese Lunar New Year collection at the beginning of 2020 and the quality is just fine. I just haven't reached for it really since I've done my review. The colors I think are quite boring honestly and just kind of nondescript so it hasn't been one that I've been interested in reaching for and when I think of Pat McGrath I want something bold that's going to catch my attention that I want to wear. I don't feel like reaching for this. It's kind of yawn for me. All right now we're moving up a tier. We are in the seventh tier here. So this is the eh, category. These palettes were just eh, to me. Now we're getting to the point though where these palettes are not bad. The quality has now stepped up a notch. More so a lot of these are just color stories that I don't grab for as much. So we'll start off with the two that I just recently reviewed. These are from the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Eye Filter Collection. So this first one here is Diva Lights and then the other one here is Star Aura. I just think Charlotte Tilbury has a much better formula. While these are pretty, these are not original color stories. The price per gram is so inflated. It's $18. And so for that reason, I had to put these here. I will continue to use these, but they're just eh. We also have the Melt Cosmetics Rust Palette. This my mom actually purchased for herself, so this wasn't even sitting in my collection, but I did try it a couple times. I wasn't in love with this formula. I feel like Melt is just so hit or miss, and this was kind of a miss for me. It wasn't the worst palette that I tried from Melt. Actually, Millennial Pink was the worst. That would should have been in the worst category, but I returned that. So technically 110 palettes. Anyways, 
yeah, I felt like the shadows just kind of blended away. They weren't the easiest to work with, but you could definitely get a look out of it. We have both of the Kaleidos Lunar Lavender and then Sashimi City. The looks you can get, so pretty. I just recently dug into them. This is Lunar Lavender. And then we have Sashimi City. I will say, though, I feel like the formula of these aren't as good as the regular Kaleidos formula. The mattes were a little bit harder to blend. I had to keep reapplying because I felt like I wasn't getting the pigmentation that I wanted. The shimmers, absolutely beautiful lid toppers, but they didn't have as much pigmentation as I was hoping for. So both of these palettes did require a little bit of extra love to get a look that I wanted. We have the Tom Ford Arabesque palette. I was just extremely underwhelmed by this palette. It is very pretty, but I feel like the lid topper shades are too lid toppery. I needed more pigmentation from these, so it means a lot of times if I am wearing this palette, I do have to dig into another palette. So while the shadows do blend really great, they aren't a complete palette. We have the Vizzy Art Spritz Edit Palette. This one just kind of fell under the radar for me, to be honest. I like other Vizzy Art palettes more. It's just more so of a color story kind of things, and I feel like the shadows in here aren't quite as pigmented or as punchy as I would like for them to be, so the color story is just kind of in to me. We have the BK Beauty True Beauty palette. This is one of those palettes, like I said, it's very good. It's just a soft palette, and the formulation is a little bit more powdery than I would prefer. You still can work with it. The shadows are easy to blend. I don't have a problem with the quality. It's just not the typical formula that I prefer, and while I've been at home all year, I've been wanting to create crazy, colorful kind of looks, so this isn't one that I've been tempted to reach for quite as much. We have the Huda Beauty Sand Haze Palette. I just didn't think the formulations of these were the greatest. They were a little bit harder to blend. And on top of that, I just didn't like this color story. The other two palettes in this range, they have a much better color story, so they ranked a little bit higher. But for this one, I feel like the color story wasn't that great. Neither was the formula. I know for a fact this one is no longer sold. This is the Morphe 35i Ice Fantasy Palette. And it was a really great introduction to pastels for me. I don't own a lot of pastel palettes and I actually really like this. Um, there are some things with the quality that I don't love, but for the most part, this was a great introduction to pastels to me. Now, are they the greatest pastels? No. Have I reached for this very often? No. So that's why it is in this category. We have the Elf Earth and Ocean palette. I picked this guy up for a sponsorship that I was doing with Elf and this palette has some hits and misses in here so some of the shadows in here I think are really great and I love the color story for this but like this shade is kind of a mess and then a few of the mattes I have a little bit of trouble with so it's just a little bit of inconsistency in here but it's not a bad palette same thing kind of goes for the elf and J kissa palette I do think that this is great if you're looking to add some rainbows in your collection but I did notice a little bit of inconsistencies and it's just not the best rainbow palette that I have I like it I have some really great looks that I pulled out of this, but I also feel like the actual shades of the colors are a little bit more intense than I would also prefer. They're just too vibrant for me, so not necessarily a more wearable tone of the bright colors, so just not the colors that I would choose for myself. All right, so now we're going to move on to the fourth category, which is going to be ranking number six out of ten. So these are just didn't reach for for whatever reason I wasn't as tempted to reach for. So we'll start off with the Huda Beauty since I've already kind of mentioned them. We have the Khaki Haze and the Purple Haze. What I love most about these is the color story but the quality is what is really kind of compromised with these. So the looks I create are very very gorgeous but just know it does take a little bit of a journey to get there. Why is my water bottle right there? <laughs> it is a little bit of a journey to get there but I love the color story so that's kind of what's pushing them up. We have the Odin's Eye Soul Main eyeshadow palette and this is a absolutely gorgeous eyeshadow palette. The textures, the dimensioning here are really really stunning. I just didn't reach for them uh, because I have so many palettes in my collection. So yeah, that's 
just kind of where it fell. We have the Makeup by Mario Master Mattes palette. This one, I wasn't in love with the quality just because I have better. I have formulas like Visi Art. So I think for the average consumer, this is a great, but it's not something that I reach for a lot just because I know I have better quality of these colors. We have the Visi Art Chocolat Petit Four. This is beautiful. I like the formula of it. It is a little bit more sheer than I would prefer, but it's just a bit too warm for the colors that I tend to grab for, so that's why this one is ranking here. We have the Pat McGrath Labs Mothership, what is this, Rose Decadence. So I have the real deal as far as Rose Decadence, and by the time that this came out, I was a little bit tired of these pinky tones, so this one was kind of run down for me. I was tired of these kind of colors. It's a pretty palette. I feel like the formula wasn't as good as her normal formulations. These shadows feel a little bit more dry than what I'm used to from Pat McGrath as well. We have the Beauty by Stony Remedy eyeshadow palette. So this is one that I tried fairly recently and I think the quality is pretty good. The only thing is this isn't my color story. So this isn't a color story that screams out to me. They actually have a new palette that they just sent me which I'm much more in love with that color story so I'll talk about that later on in another video. But anyways, not a color story that I'm really that obsessed with but it's a very unique color story. We have the BH Cosmetics Mimosa eyeshadow palette and this is really really pretty but I just really wasn't tempted to reach for this guy this year. I feel like the colors pull a little bit brighter and a little bit more different than they look on the pan. It's just not my favorite formulation or color story from BH Cosmetics. And then the last one in my just didn't reach for category is the Fade Into Hue from ColourPop. Now this is fairly new and I really recommend it if you're looking to add more color to your collection because it's a relatively affordable way to get these colors. This is the palette that I'm wearing now. I'm mostly wearing this purple row right here. And this palette is great. A little bit harder to work with. You have to take your time. I think it's great considering how much it costs and the kind of colors that you have. They're just harder to formulate. So it's really great for that reason. Just know if you're going to work with this palette, you do need to take your time. And of course, it's not really a palette I'm gonna reach for a lot, but it works, you know, it gets the job done. We're now coming up to the better category. So at this point, this is really the turning point of where I can say I really do like these eyeshadow palettes. There's just a lot of competition. So this is the kind of boring category. So palettes that I like, but not ones that scream out to me. So we'll start off with this one. This is Charlotte Tilbury, the Sophisticate. Now I totally bought this to complete my collection. And I think you can see why this falls in the kind of boring category. The formulation is really nice. It's just, I bought it to complete my collection, not because I needed those colors. We have Tom Ford Noir Foom. Now this is really pretty. I feel like this would rank differently if the year had turned out differently because I actually really love these cooler tones. I'm a bit underwhelmed by the quality of the shimmers here because I know Tom Ford has better quality, uh, but kind of boring. And same thing goes for De La Creme from Tom Ford. Again, kind of a boring palette. Probably would have ranked higher had circumstances been different this year and I actually went into work. Uh, again, shimmers, a little bit lackluster, but still a really great, beautiful, blendable palette. Just didn't fit my needs this year. We have the Marc Jacobs Terrific eyeshadow palette. So this one, I would say more so just not my color story. I think the quality in here was really good. I think there was one shadow in here that I was kind of eh about the quality, but regardless, it's a really gorgeous palette, just not one that I was very tempted to reach for this year. We have the Wayne Goss Imperial Topaz eyeshadow palette. This I liked a lot more than his Pearl Moonstone palette. It really is a stunning palette. It's functional. I don't have much bad things to say about this. I think it was a little bit overpriced. Weird year for me. Didn't really grab for it, but it's a nice palette. We have the Ofra and Leora palette. If you don't know my friend Leora, she curated this really, really fun palette. And this really introduced me to Ofra's eyeshadow formula. And there's something about this eyeshadow formula that I feel like is really nice. I was surprised and I was surprised by the versatility of this palette. Again, I just had so many palettes. This smaller one kind of 
fell to the back, but it's really nice. We have the NARS Extreme Effects Eyeshadow Palette. I really like this one, and I know a lot of you guys really liked this one as well. The only thing is I felt like the shadows swatched better than how they actually applied, so I think I was almost a little bit disappointed by this palette. The quality is still really nice, and you can create really good looks with it. I just felt like they swatched so good. We have a, another NARS palette. This is one that I just recently reviewed. This is the Euphoria face palette, and you can check out my video to see what I think about it. The color are just kind of bleh. You know, the quality is really, really nice. I can't deny the quality. So I feel like this is a palette that I will actually grab for when the year continues on because the quality is good, but there definitely are some things, in my opinion, that could be changed about this palette. We have the Melt Cosmetics She's in Parties palette. Now, this is by far the best quality that I have tried from Melt. I really loved it. I just don't love the color story. I just feel like these dark shades right here are too close to each other. And not only that, they're not tones that I reach for. I love this first beginning half of the palette, but it got a little bit repetitive towards the end here. And it's just a bit too dark for me. We have the one size eyeshadow palette that came out for Patrick Starr's brand. I really like this. I feel like it didn't get as much love as it deserved. Now, is it one that I reach for a lot since I purchased it? No, because it is boring. I just didn't reach for it as much, but I do like the quality of this. You can get it on sale still, I believe, and I think it's most definitely worth the value. And it's just really great basic colors. And then finally, the last one in this category is the Jaclyn Hill Volume 2 palette with Morphe. I thought the quality in here was really, really nice. What I'm not so in love with is the color story. It definitely runs way too warm and colorful for my preferences. And everything I feel like has a warm undertone to where it looks like really hot, fiery on the eyes, which I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of. So that's more so personal preference, but I will say the quality in here is really good. I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me, but if she came out with another palette, I would totally pick it up because the quality I was very, very impressed by. Have I used it? Not much. Maybe one or two times since I've reviewed it. So we're gonna move up into the next category, which is worth a try. So these eyeshadow palettes I really like. I might not be in love with them, but I really like them and they're definitely worth a try if you're interested in the color story. So we have a couple from Charlotte Tilbury, so be prepared. We have the Super Blue Eyeshadow Formula and at the release of this, I really feel like there was a shift in her formula. I just don't grab for blues a lot. I don't know, I just didn't grab for this palette a lot, but it is really, really pretty. Then we have the Desert Haze Quad. The formulation in here is absolutely incredible. It's just a little small quad of mattes, so I didn't find myself reaching for it a lot this year, but something about this formula is so buttery, smooth, delicious. And then we have the last one. This also came out with the Super Blue Quad from Charlotte Tilbury, so the formula is spectacular. It just wasn't a color story that I reached for a ton, but it's definitely beautiful if you like the color story. Next, we have from Busy Art the Petite for Lilas. I would love this a lot more more if it had a little bit more depth to it. I feel like it's definitely one shade on your eye, not a lot of depth. The look is pretty, but it's just missing one color. So next we have e.l.f. Bite Size Eyeshadow Palettes that I do really very much enjoy. I feel like the quality of these are really good, especially for $3. Now, are they going to be Natasha Denona quality? No, but for $3, the matte's are workable for sure and the shimmers are quite pigmented and look very nice on the eyes. This was the year that I discovered Nabla Cosmetics and there is no running back for me. This is the Dreamy palette. This is the first palette that I ever tried from Nabla. This shade is the only dot in here and of course it was one of the first that I used. But everything else is buttery smooth. I love the tones of this palette. I just haven't had enough time to give it love because a lot of palettes came out at once. We have the Makeup by Mario Master Metal. So this one is that, not weird, but it's where you only got five, but you paid a lot of money, but you're supposed to do it with a mixing medium, and it's really metallic on the eyes. That is definitely the case. It's really, really cool, but I don't have time to do all that mixing and whatnot. <laughs> 
Then we have the Huda Beauty Naughty Nudes Palette. I really like this. The colors in here were very, very nice. And I like the way that everything blended. The only thing is I already had all of these colors in my other Huda Beauty palettes. So for that reason, this one falls in this category. But if you love the color story, definitely worth a try. We have the ColourPop at Forest Sight palette. This was the collaboration with Raw Beauty Christy. Now I will say I'm not the most experienced with this. I've only used this palette twice and both looks I didn't use a ton of colors so that's why I'm not as well versed in this palette. I had two different experiences. The first one when I reached for the more neutral colors I was like wow this palette's incredible. The second experience when I played with these colors I mixed them with one of the new Danessa Myricks Twin Flames. A little bit more difficult to blend but it's also is a more affordable palette so I like it so far. Then we have the e.l.f. Retro Paradise palette. I picked this up way after it released, but I was very, very impressed by the formulation of this. Of course, as always, you might need to give it a little bit of extra love, but the colors in here I think are harder to formulate, and they did a really nice job with it, and I really enjoy it, the color story here. And then the last one that we have to talk about in this category is the Odin's Eye Alva Eyeshadow palette. This one, again, is really beautiful. There's a lot of dimension in here. If you like these pinky kind of mauvey tones, I really think you are going to enjoy this formula. The colors are kind of nondescript in a way that I didn't grab for it a ton, but every time I use this palette, I thoroughly enjoyed it. All right, you guys, we're making it. We are on to good, but not great. So these palettes are really good. I can't say anything too bad about them. So the first one that we have is the Natasha Denona Mini Retro Palette. I thought that this was a beautiful spring palette. The only thing is this color pulled much more gray on me than I had wanted, but this is overall a very beautiful palette. The next one that we have is from Makeup by Mario. This is the Master Metallic. Alex. This is definitely my favorite palette that he came out with. I love the Italian formula that is in here. I love the extra little dimension that these shimmers have and it's been really great to kind of pull this with other palettes to just top off my eyelid. We have the Dior Sprint palette. This is definitely a surprise to me. I did not expect to love this as much as I did. This was part of their summer collection in 2020 and I just really feel like the shadows were very soft but in a good way and it really was a fun way to play with color while still feeling very comfortable with the fact that I did have color on my eyelid. We have the Visi Art Petite 4 Praline palette. This one was my favorite from these little petite fours. I just feel like it's a really great color story for me. It is one that I grab for a lot. Now this is fairly new so I haven't reached for it a lot but I know I really am going to enjoy this well into 2021. We have this quad from Nabla Cosmetics. So this this is their glitter quad. It's the Miami Lights glitter quad and I have to say they have one of my favorite pressed glitter formulas. I don't use pressed glitter very often. I am wearing some loose glitter from Sydney Grace today but it's very far and few between that I do do that and I really enjoy the glitter formula that Nabla has. We have the Tom Ford First Frost Eyeshadow Quad. This was by far my favorite quad from Tom Ford that I've tried this year. It is a little bit lighter but I really love the quality. The eyeshadow looks so sophisticated on the eye and I just I love this color story. The next one that we have is from Sydney Grace. This is the Enduring Love palette. If you enjoy cool tones you will really love this palette. Now I didn't dig into this palette as much as I would like so I do plan on using this some more in 2021. I think I've only created two looks with this palette but the quality is impeccable and I'm looking forward to continue trying this this year. We have the Muse Beauty Impressionism palette. I think it's a really fun play of colors. I love the colors that they chose. I love the way that the colors are laid out. It's not normally a color story that I would go for, but I do have to say I do feel inspired by this palette and you can create some pretty looks. I think it was this color that I wasn't that crazy about, but other than that, it was a really great palette. And I also created a really beautiful neutral look with this palette. So it does have some versatility there. The next one 
one that we have is the Maybelline Nudes of New York palette. Probably the best drugstore palette that I've tried, like truly from the drugstore that you can get from CVS. The quality is so good given the price. The mattes are really blendable, the shimmers are great. The only downfall of this I would say is probably wear time, but other than that, it's the best quality drugstore palette that I tried this year. And the last palette in this category is the ABH Am Resi palette. Now this palette did grow on me. I didn't use it a lot because at first the color story just didn't speak to me at all, but the longer I've had it, the more I've stared at it, the more I realize that I actually really do enjoy this palette a lot. I feel like if you break them up into quads it makes a lot more sense and I really enjoy the colors that Amrezi chose. I love the quality that this palette has to offer. It's really beautiful and glam. So it, it was an underdog for me that kind of swooped up towards the end of the year that I realized hey I actually really do like this palette. So the next category that we have is great but there's even better meaning there's more categories going up but these palettes are just great. So this first one is from the Charlotte Tilbury Holiday Collection this year. This is the Diamond... This is... Dude! Dude! Hello! This is... <laughs> follow. Follow. Okay. This is the Dazzling Diamonds Luxury Palette of Pops. This is by far the best palette that I've tried in the way of palettes of pops from Charlotte Tilbury. I love topping off an eye look with these really slight, beautiful glitteries all over the eye and they don't fall out. That was my big problem with some previous formulas that she had was that they like fell out everywhere. We have the Charlotte Tilbury Bejeweled Eyes to Hypnotize. This is one that I feel sad that I didn't get more use out of this year. Stunning color story. You get a lot of creative looks with this. I love the variety that you have with this and the quality is great. I don't know why. I just didn't reach for it as much as it deserves, but it's a really great palette. We have a couple guys from Pat McGrath. So we have the Interstellar Icon Quad. Now I think this one is my favorite of the quads that came out because the color story is really unique. I do not have a quad that looks like this. I don't think I have a lot of palettes with these colors anyways to begin with. So this palette is really unique. It's been really great and grungy for this time of year. The next palette that we have is the Pat McGrath Labs Risque Rose. So this one in particular I loved for the quality but these are repetitive colors within the Pat McGrath line but the formula is really beautiful and I love the color story. It's just not as unique as Interstellar Icon but it is still a wonderful palette. Next up we have the Tiny Marvels palette from Sydney Grace. This was done in collaboration with my YouTube friend Mel Thompson. She kicked booty with this palette. I love this color story. This is a palette that I plan on keeping out on my desk so that I can use it more because I really love the color story. I love the light pastels. I love how wearable it is but there's also some pops in here and Sydney Grace. Such a good formula. So wearable. So pretty. The next palette that I have is from BH Cosmetics. This is the Avocado Toast palette. So many people went crazy over this palette and for good reason. We loved greens this year. Green was a very popular color. BH really killed it with their formula this year. I feel like for their price, their formula is unmatched. Now, this isn't technically a drugstore brand, but it's definitely the best affordable brand as far as quality goes. I love this palette. The next one that we have is from Vizzy Art. This is the Itondu Violette palette, or Violette Itondu, excuse me. And it's a gorgeous purple palette. I feel like they really laid out the purples in here very well. You can get a more wearable look, but you can also get a little bit more of an obnoxious purple kind of look. Now, this isn't my favorite from Vizzy Art. I feel like the original purple palette, the liaison that they came out with was a little bit better. It was a little bit creamier, but nonetheless, Vizzy Art's formula is still so good that this is still really nice. And then the last palette that we have in this category is the Kaleidos. What is this? The Escape Pod palette. I think color story alone is the reason why this palette is ranking so high. The quality of these shades right here were really, really stunning and so shiny and glimmery. The mattes weren't the best, 
But just how creative this palette may may feel is the reason why it's ranking so high. It's such a gorgeous, unique, beautiful color story. Okay, you guys, we are on to the second best category. This is the last category that I'm talking about today. This is even better, but not the best. So these are palettes that I wish I could have put in my best eyeshadows of 2020, but they didn't quite make the cut. So the first ones that we have are from Rare Beauty. These were the most surprising palettes to me of 2020. I honestly was expecting these palettes to be very bad. They were pretty affordable for a high-end brand, but I love the formula here. I love the color stories. I, I prefer this palette a little bit more. This is Confident Energy and this one is Magnetic Spirit, but I feel like even though these are all shimmer, they look beautiful all over the eye. They look beautiful layered. They have such a unique color story. It's really great to create looks with. I just was so shocked at how much I loved these palettes this year. We of course, we of course, had to put in Fire Rose. This was so, so, so close to making it to the best of the best. It just didn't because it really isn't the kind of color story that I'm in love with, but the formula, this is the best formula that Miss Charlotte Tilbury has ever, 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 ever come out with. It is so good. This shade right here, this is a super pop. Sorry if you didn't get a hold of it, <laughs> sucks. And then the other palette that I tried this year from Charlotte Tilbury that had an amazing formula was Queen of Glow. So this actually belongs to my mom, but I do need to eventually pick this one up for myself because the formula here is extra, extra creamy and just a beautiful overall everyday wearable color. I love this quad. This next palette I haven't gotten the chance to talk about yet too much on my channel. It will be in an upcoming ranking palettes. I've tried this month video, but we have the Too Faced pumpkin spice palette. Now, it's not amazing quality. I've had a few shades that were a little bit more difficult to blend, but I love this color story. This was my most used palette in December. I really like it, you guys. And like I said, like when you get in this area, some of the colors are a little bit harder to blend, but I've created so many different looks with this palette and have loved every single one. So, I love that palette. We also have the ColourPop and Mulan collaboration palette. I really feel like ColourPop stepped it up with this formula, this color story. It's a great neutral color story, but you still get a lot of dimension, a lot of different textures. I wish all palettes that they did were as good as this one. So stunning. We also have the Natasha Denona Trio Chrome palette. I butchered the name every single time I said it this year, but I'm more so in love with the mattes. I was actually a little bit underwhelmed by the Trio Chrome formula, but the matte shades were really inspiring to me, and I just love creating different color combinations with this palette. And then this one, it hurt me not to put this in the best of the best because, quite frankly, it was probably one of my most used. This is the bronze palette. Now, the only reason why it didn't get in the best of the best was because I really did kind of feel like every look I created with this palette looked the same, but I loved every single look. Oh, I just gave away the next one. <laughs> I loved every single look with this palette. The quality was phenomenal. If you're into bronzy tones, I highly recommend that one. And then... Whew, the last palette that I'm going to talk about today is the ColourPop Stone Cold Fox palette. This one blew me away. Uh, again, one of ColourPop's best this year. And uh, most of that has to do with the amazing color story. If you are a regular follower of mine, cool toned queen over here. I love all tones. But cool tones have a special place in my heart, so I was elated to see ColourPop come out with this, and the quality is just fine. You know, it's not Natasha Denona quality, but it's on the upper end of ColourPop quality, I would say. So that is not the end. We still have the best category, but if you watch my channel, you've already watched that video. But if you haven't, I'm going to link that video down below to send you over there. So the Stone Cold Fox was the last palette that I have to talk about. Oh, so there we go, guys. That was me ranking every single eyeshadow palette. Almost every single. I don't know if I was as accurate if I could. <laughs> Hopefully every single one. And it was really fun. I'm sorry if you wanted it number by number, but I really just feel like I would have been randomly placing some palettes anyways. So yeah, I am looking forward, of course, to trying all of the new eyeshadow palettes that come out in 2021. I already have some palettes on backup that I am behind on getting a chance to try, but I have said this in a previous video. I'm really looking forward 
to seeing what kind of eyeshadow palette content I can create this year. I've had so much fun creating eyeshadow palette videos and you guys have really seemed to enjoy them. So this year I really want to focus on creating some unique eyeshadow content. So that is all I have for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.